First thing you need to do is hop onto a Windows PC and head over to the Windows 10 media creation site, which I'll link in the description below and download the Windows 10 installation media tool. You will need a USB drive or a SD card to be able to install this to or an NVMe M2 if you happen to pick one up. Then what you need to do is go to create installation media. And when you've selected your language and architecture options, you need to pick the ISO file version. Don't create the USB file as this will create a standard Windows install and you want to create a Windows to go install. Now, depending on the speed of your drive, this can take between 10 minutes and half an hour. So I'm just going to skip through the process here so that you're not waiting around. Once that's finished, you can just close this off and then you're going to need to download a tool called Rufus or a similar tool to be able to create your Windows to go media. So in Rufus, if you're not using USB drive, make sure that you tick the list USB hard drives option so you can see your device in the device properties. Pick that and then in the image option, select the Windows 10 ISO that you just downloaded. Set the partition schema to MBR or GBT. It doesn't really matter. doesn't matter what partition schema you use here, but it is important that you change the image option to Windows to go. When you hit start, you'll get a couple of extra options here. If you don't want to be bothered with the privacy section, tick the top section there, and then you can just leave the bottom one ticked as well and accept the warnings and start your installation media. Now, if you're using a M2 dock and you want to partition it, then you will need to install the Windows to go section first, and then you can come in and partition it after that's done. So this is an optional step. You can skip this if you don't have an M2 and you don't want to be partitioning the drive. But if you do want to partition it, then come into the disk format utility in Windows 10 just by searching for disk format. Locate your NVMe and then you want to shrink the ISO drive that's just been created. Now I halved mine, so this was a two terabyte drive, although you do lose a little bit. So I put it around 930 gig to shrink that volume. Then once it's shrunk, you can format it to NTFS. Now some people have said that you need an EXT4 for SteamOS to recognize it. That's not true. I've had perfectly fine results on NTFS. And I did try it as EXT4, but I actually had a lot more issues. So I've now gone back to NTFS again. Now, before you eject the drive, I found it a lot easier to download the Windows drivers that you need on Steam Deck and put them on the SD card or the installation media before you actually take it out. This is because Windows 10 does not have Wi-Fi drivers by default for the Steam Deck. So you won't be able to connect to the internet straight away and you'll need to transfer those over unless you have an ethernet connection via a dock. Then the quickest route for doing this I found is while you're on the PC, just download them all from the Steam site. As you can see, I've already downloaded them here and I just created a Steam drivers folder on the root drive of the installation media and then extracted them all so that they're ready when I actually get into Windows. And you'll see that when I come onto that side of things. I'll link the Steam support site for the Windows 10 drivers in the description below so you can grab all those. But this makes life a lot easier on the other side. You need to shut down your Steam Deck and power it on holding the power button and volume down. Now when you hear the boot ups down, keep your finger on the volume down, but release the power button. This will take you into the bootloader and generally it's the third option down for the installation media that you have put in. You can see that it says USB device here and that's the type of SD card that's plugged in. So select that to boot. It will go to this screen and start spinning. This will take a few minutes and it will reboot in this process. Now during Windows 10 install, it does only reboot once. But because you're not setting an auto boot here, it will automatically reboot into Steam OS. So just leave this going and when it reappears into Steam OS, shut it down and repeat the process to boot off of the third option to continue the Windows install process. Once you've done that reboot, you'll get the just a moment section for Windows. And for some reason, it does put the display into the wrong orientation. So you have to do this in landscape mode. 
And as you can see, it does come up saying, let's connect you to a network, but because there's no Wi-Fi, you want to select the option of, I don't have internet, then continue with limited setup. This will take you through the rest of the Windows 10 installation, where you need to set a PC name and then grant permissions. And then this will go back into the final stages for setting up Windows 10. So just let this finish and then you'll be on to the final installation steps. Now, once you're into Windows, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is open up the menu and go to settings, system, display, and change the display orientation to landscape. Now, for some reason, this is the last option on the list as flip seems to be the first options. So you can get the display into horizontal mode. Now scale and layout at 125 makes life easy for navigating around, but a lot of applications go off the screen at 125 ratio. So I do recommend setting the display ratio at 100%. Now you'll see that because we've got all the drivers on here, I can just go to my C drive, which is where the Windows to go is installed by default. I can now install my wireless drivers so I can start getting the Windows updates. You'll just have to accept the run here because it's got no internet, it moans about smart screen and you can install the Windows drivers one by one. So I started with the Windows LAN drivers just so I could get the internet connected. And then I also did the APU driver, which is also known as the GPU driver. So I could then connect it to my screen and record full screen. Once you've got all of the Steam drivers installed, you will have sound and graphics and everything else up and running. But by default, the touch keyboard doesn't pop up in standard text boxes for some unbeknown reason. So to change this, come into settings, go down to keyboard, go down to related settings and hit typing. And under the touch keyboard section, you want to tick the box that says, show the touch keyboard when not in tablet mode and there's no keyboard attached. So now if you don't have a physical keyboard attached, whenever you tap into a text box, it will now pop up the touch keyboard. As you can see here, when I was connecting to the Wi-Fi. the next thing you want to do is go into settings and look for the power plan options by searching for power plan. Scroll down to the bottom and hit additional power settings and go into create a power plan. Now you can set the high performance mode as the base for this and hit next. We can change the name of the plan as well. This will turn off the sleep settings and you can tweak the screensaver as well for in battery and off. And then you want to come into the advanced settings and say to not turn off the hard disk. So change on battery to zero on turn the hard disk off as well as when plugged in as otherwise when you go to sleep this turns off the hard drives and because the hard drive is in a sleep state it doesn't wake up when you come back in so you have to hard reboot your steam deck so keep those off and you'll be able to use sleep mode quite happily without the hard drives being completely off now for controller use in windows Instead of the old DOS C method or having to do things through Steam, there is a wonderful new program called Swick D, which stands for Steam Windows Controller Driver. I'll put the link in the description below for this to the GitHub. And as you can see, installing this is quite simple. You don't need to install the TetherScript drivers unless you want keyboard and mouse emulation as well, but this causes quite a few issues against the Steam and the controller version from just Swick D. So I don't recommend doing it. So from here, you want to download and store the VigEM bus driver and the Microsoft C++ redistributable. And then we can install the Steam Windows controller driver. Now, when you come to install this SwickD XE, it will give you lots of warnings. So to get through this, you just need to follow the steps here and say show more and download anyway. And then more info once it's running. And again, run anyway. Install SwickD and this will not open by default. So you need to come into your Windows menu and search for SwickD, or if you see it on your desktop, you can just run the SwickD driver and you'll see this in the quick bar below. Show this because there is a couple of things I just want to cover off in here. 
by default, your keyboard and mouse emulation is working through Windows. And it's called lizard mode under the default profile in Swick D for some reason. This interferes with the controller in game mode. So if you want to have no issues in game mode, then have Steam open and disable this mouse movement and buttons enabled for lizard mode. Now, if you're just using Swick D and you don't have Steam installed, disabling this will immediately disable the mouse and keyboard emulation for the Steam controllers. So you will need to then just use touch or an external mouse or keyboard. But as you can see here, it adds a Xbox 360 emulated controller and all of the buttons of the Steam Deck are mapped perfectly to this. And it works extremely well, as you can see here in Chivalry 2. So there you go. You have Windows 10 set up and controller support in and out of Steam and also Windows. Now you can go and install all the games that you like or all the applications you like and have full controller support as well as anything physical plugged in as well if you need mouse and keyboard. Let us know in the comments below if you have got into Windows 10 and how you've got on and what games you've been playing. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.